What's up everybody, Thralls Miller here once again. I'm Necroc Nick and I have an album review for you. So another one I want to go over for the 21st of October was the newest offering and sophomore album from Morbific, Squirm Beyond the Mortal Realm. As I said, this also comes out on the 21st of October on Memento Mori Records. This band formed in Finland in 2020. This is their second full length overall. I actually have their first one, Ominous Sleep of Putridity. I picked it up after jamming one track and I was pretty impressed with how flat out fucking disgusting this is. This is Finnish death metal. I mean, yeah, you can definitely say that just because they're from Finland. But honestly, this band's sound is so deeply rooted in all things autopsy that, well, I mean, they kind of sound like autopsy. Now, the front man and basis of this band also fronts the band Sadistic Drive, which I'm also a big fan of. And their sound is definitely a little bit more like Floridian, like more like cannibal corpse worship. This band is very raw, very disgusting, and kind of taking death metal back to its primal roots, much like Autopsy just did with their new album. The opening track and title track opens up with dreary synths and organs kind of blended together. Like you get like that church organ sound and then like the horror synths kind of playing off of one another. And before you even have time to really figure out what you're hearing, like if it is that blend, it just gets fucking filthy. The production on here is incredibly raw like it is flat out just filthy the bass tone is this constant droning fuzz in the background it sizzles it sounds like whatever amp he's playing on is about to fucking call it quits and the guitar tone is just this fucking rotten sound like it sounds dirty like there's fucking pus and entrails on the fucking strings and it's being played through a broken intercom uh probably through some drive through it crackles it sizzles it crunches. It even occasionally kind of sounds like one of those dry farts you rip and it scratches your ass on the way out. You know the kind. And drum production that I don't think has any effects on it other than the guy hitting everything as hard as he can and just playing like a maniac. In fact, the drum style is actually very similar to Chris Reifert's very maniacal, aggressive style. This band is flat out primal, but very riffy. The thing that I really was drawn to on this is the fact that the riff construction while it is very rooted in early death metal and just all things like, I would say, pre-1992, there's a lot of cool like hooks in this. They're brutal, they're sludgy. The switches from like almost death grind, like kind of like terrorizer-esque moments to flat out crawling death doom really can catch you off guard, but you are generally greeted with awesome riffs regardless. There is a fair amount of lead work on here, but the lead work is mostly there just to sort of just accent. Like it's quick dive bombs, really strange atonal fucking shredding. Like it's all designed to sound creepy and filthy and uh, mission accomplished. When it comes down to atmosphere in here, most of it is just created by the music. Like they do have some moments where they sprinkle in some synths in the background, which at moments on here kind of oddly blend in with the droning fuzz of the bass. And you do get more atmospheric tracks like Invitation to Oblivion, which is a clean interlude track with like droning ambience behind it. But most of them it's just peppered in there for like a quick bit of atmosphere or like a nod to a horror film like Long Live the New Flesh, which I'm pretty sure they just took that right from Videodrome. The vocals are appropriately gross. They sound like a dying ogre in the background. All of this is just so fucking disgusting. Like it's dripping forth fucking filth as you listen to it. Like there's like ooze coming out of your speakers. It sounds as disgusting as this album cover looks, which looks like it is a combination of entrails and large booger sculptures. And there are some appropriately over the top death metal song titles on here too. Like Meal from an Open Skull, which I'm pretty sure that's how Jeffrey Dahmer ate breakfast every morning. And Baptized in the Fluids of Decay, which I'm reasonably sure that's how you become a carcass roadie. But musically, like, there's not, like, a lot of, like, different parts of this. They have their own kind of dynamics where it's just very raw and very primal. They repeat a lot of riffs, but the riffs they repeat are really good. One of the best examples of them repeating awesome fucking riffs is the song Suicide Sanctum. Oh my god, the Death Doom breakdown that is on there is loaded with what I believe are hammer-ons. I'm not a guitarist, and I'm not going to pretend I know exactly what that is, but I did look up a video and... What the guy did sounded like what they were doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it's hammer-ons, and if it's not, someone please correct me. But the Death Doom riff and breakdown that pops up on there and repeats very often has those hammer-ons and like some disgusting bends or slides in it. It just sounds like, again, the riff is oozing out of your speakers and just kind of cements the fact that this is going to be a disgusting song, but 
Jesus, it's fucking catchier than hell. And much like Autopsy, when they move to like a Death Doom section, there are like clear nods to like earlier Doom Metal, like mainly Black Sabbath, especially in the title track, that first Death Doom breakdown that comes in, the riff itself sounds like a fiercely Tony Iommi sort of riff, like there's a little bit of a Sabbathy swing to it. And when it's not doing Death Doom breakdowns and blast beats, it is generally doing some solid groovy sections with great fucking riffs on top of them, of course, as well, because that is essentially the thing that I really latched onto in this. Malignant germination is a giant riff farm, and I think that kind of works with the whole germination thing anyway. Uh, it's an awesome fucking song. I love the fact that it has this steady, almost sort of bolt thrower groove to it. Great, heavy fucking riffs and a giant death doom section at the end, which really like curtails into an awesome outro of just like, creepy synths, there's a clean break in it. There's a really good tension building aspect towards the end of the song that kind of builds it up a bit. And I don't really find that on a lot of these other songs, minus like a couple on here. It gets more like creepy and atmospheric as it goes on. Like there's a tremolo sort of like melody that comes in and then it kind of turns into an almost bluesy lead and then you hear synths in the background. It just turns in this very grand, but uh, still very disgusting thing like the uh, credits rolling after a horror movie, except this is the death metal version of the score itself. Now I do think there's like a little bit of crossover here between this project and Sadistic Drive, namely in the song Pathogenic Injection. That one does have a little bit more of like a cannibal corpse feel, like namely Tomb of the Mutilated and The Bleeding. The riffs feel a little bit more brutal, like they're less punky, because there's definitely a lot of like punky looseness to this. It's a tighter album maybe overall than the debut, but it's still very loose, it's still very fluid and kind of wild and maybe like bordering on losing control in some spots. But this song feels like a little bit tighter and a little bit more focused on just being brutal. It pivots well between really good thrashy sections and then just like sort of brutal grooves. This is very much Cannibal Corpse territory right there. But it still finds a way to squeeze in like some cool ambience, like there's a doomy synth part and that kind of leads into another giant riff at the end. But I kind of like these little clean breaks that pop up kind of at random. Like generally the transitions can be so abrupt on here that they kind of catch you off guard, which, you know, that's kind of the autopsy thing anyway. Even on the song, The Head Harvest, there's like a slight sort of blackened feel to it. Like there's some more cold, dissonant tremolos on it. And much like autopsy, there is definitely some punky influence, especially on the song, Meth Mansion Murders, which that song was fun, mainly because it made me do some research. Cause I initially thought like, hey, are they talking about that fucking creepy Pazuzu dude that formed his own cult and fucking killed some people? It very well could have been, but me being me, I actually Googled Meth Mansion Murders. And one of the first stories I came across was a dude that literally had a million dollar mansion and was busted for having a meth lab in his basement, as well as a fuck ton of arms. Like this dude had like tons of guns and of course all the chemicals to create meth and he was going for the high end Walter White style shit. And much like Walter White's character, a lot of bravado because he was living right across the street from a fucking cop, the fucking balls on this dude. So I don't know if that's what the song is about, but I don't know, it'd kind of be weird if it was because that took place in Cleveland, Ohio. And if it's not, it's a fucking kick-ass song. It was a lot of fun. And that's kind of the whole thing about this whole album. It's just gross, dirty fucking fun. I will say though, the production on it, I think is even more raw than the first one. The first one was really raw. So I do take some issue with it being like so underproduced that it does sound a little gnarly. Like the bass is just kind of indistinguishable on here. And that guitar tone, while I like how filthy it is, I think some of the riffs and melodies could be made out a little bit better if it was just, I don't know, kind of reined in just a little bit. But overall, I really dug this. This is just an absolutely disgusting release. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it three and a half stars. This is just filthy, ugly, old school death metal with its roots firmly planted in Autopsy's backyard. Pretty much if you like Autopsy, I just don't see how you wouldn't dig this. This has that vibe. It's filthy, it's disgusting, lots of horror references. It's very riff oriented. There's lots of cool death doom breakdowns. The songwriting is primal, but it's well constructed. This is just a lot of fun to listen to. This is like putting on a fucking campy B-rated horror movie and watching it and laughing your ass off at spots that you're probably not supposed to laugh your ass off at, but you do anyway because it's just goofy and ridiculous. That is kind of the whole vibe of Morbific. It's ridiculous, it's over the top, but it's fucking fun and Jesus Christ, these guys know how to fucking write riffs. I strongly recommend this if you're just looking for some 
just gross, disgusting fun. This is pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there is a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Where there is a link to our Patreon, there's also our store there. We have t-shirts for now. We will be expanding into other uh, stuff eventually. I'm not really sure when we're going to expand, but they haven't told me no enough times about the grenades. So I'm just going to go ahead and say there's going to be grenades. And of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that stuff. Yes, the big thank you part. I am as eternally grateful as I was the first time that I shot a video and got a response from it. You know, this fucking means a lot. It's great to see everyone come here, hang out, comment, and all that shit. Like, you know, this is just a fun thing that we've created here, and we're glad a lot of people like it. So, once again, thank you all so much, and we will catch you later.